Hi everyone, I'm Robbie Herring here with Flying Unicorn and today we're going to make a dress form and it was something that Alda included in the kits um, last month and I loved it and could probably do them all the time and so really looking forward to showing y'all how I, how I do them. And the other thing is I got a couple of announcements and I had them pulled up on my email and I just lost them. Uh, we're going to... Uh, we have kits release on Monday. Hang on, let me find it. Here we go. Wait a second, that's not true. We have pre-orders on Monday. They start. Next week we have Jax. And the other thing is we want to remind y'all that in November we're doing Flying Unicorn Gives Back. And we're going to be raising money to give back for all our blessings. And our charity is Cure Sh Cure Search for Children's Cancer. So, hope y'all join us for that. All right, let's get started with the class and let me show y'all. Um, and this is what I was talking about. It's going to be a little tricky to show y'all the whole thing, but this is what we're going to make. This is the dress form. And you can see that I added lots of detail to it. And let's see if I pull it back. You can see a little better. All right, so here's the whole thing. And then even the back I did, and we're going to walk through all the different things that, um, all the different techniques that I did and the, the little things that I like to do with tool. All right, so bear with me a second, and we're going to put the camera down. And because of how messy this project is, I'm trying something a little different, and I'm going to have... A piece of white paper on here so if anybody has trouble with focus or if it starts to give us too much of a glare let me know and we will uh, we'll regroup and I'll just do it on the on the map all right so here's what we start with if you got the kits you've seen this and it's just a paper mache dress form and I'd say it's probably about at a wild guess about 16 inches tall and I started out with a couple of things that I know a lot of y'all have in your stash. And I used the vintage metal gold foil and the precious stone that are both the Prima Color Bloom Mist. And here we go. And so to start, I just sprayed a little, not much, just a little to the top and to the bottom. And this is just to kind of start building our base of color and to get us get us the uh, something to set the masking on. And we'll be adding a little bit of mist here and there. Dab it off with a paper towel and mainly just because it doesn't need a lot. And also, um, this with so many steps in it has a lot of things that need to dry. So I tried to make it to where things would dry a little more quickly so that y'all wouldn't be listening to the hair dryer all day, all night while we did the class. So, all right, here we go. So you can see I just did a little here and there. It's just a little bit of the precious stone and a little bit of the gold. So not much. You can, of course, add more if you'd like. It's totally up to you. That's the beauty of mixed media. And just lost my color bloom spray off the back of the table so I'll have to grab that here in a minute um, and then I took this I really love this stuff it's made by Viva and it is a special effects paste and this has a nice texture and we're going to use a Prima oh goodness I forgot what this is called I think it's called Damask but it's a 6 by 6 stencil and when you're doing this I would suggest that you go with something that's smaller um, because it's going to need to wrap and you're going to want to have a little bit of uh, a little bit of the pattern show. We're not going for perfection here. Um, if you look at close-ups, when I, I'll post all the close-ups and all on my blog, um, you'll see that this, this isn't perfect. So you're going to just choose a little bit of the pattern and just kind of wrap it around. And we're just going to use, I'm using this little spatula. This actually came with my pan pastels and no idea what it's really supposed to be used for, but it works really great for this. And then you'll see that I got it a little gloppy and you can just pop a little bit of that off. 
and I'm going to add it just in a few little places on the you know on the sides and on the front. The back is going to be flat. I mean on the yeah the back is going to be flatter, so you will be able to get more of a pattern on the back, which is nice because you're not going to have as much detail on the back while you're working. Uh, I mean what, with the embellishing. The back's going to be pretty simple. And you can see, I'm not using a whole lot of this. Um, the paste, I'm using just a little paste. It's actually a pretty thin layer. I feel like I'm rushing. I'll try to slow down a little bit. All right. So, and then here I got a little glue globby. So, can y'all see that? And just a little, and you, like I said, you can add as much as or as little as you want. In fact, I'm going to add a little bit more over here on this arm, too. And I like to just work around the stencil to give just different, different looks in each place. So here we go. All right. And this is going to be, we're going to let it dry a little bit. Uh while I show y'all uh, what I did with the tissue paper. The thing that I like to do for the skirt or for the uh, to cover these is I find that a lot of times if I'm trying to use paper on something that's curved, um, it makes it a little bit difficult because it doesn't go with the curves as well. And tissue paper is a great answer for that. So what I did was I used cream tissue paper and black tissue paper. And these are just inexpensive sheets. I actually buy usually the big container or the big packages of them where there's a bunch of colors. And then if I need one, I've got it. Um, and instead of just using the black, I took a punch and I, let me show you this. You can kind of see if you look that behind this, I've layered it. And all I did was I took just this little punch and punched it out of the black. And I've done some of this ahead of time because I know that this is a class that can go a little bit long. So, Mod Podge. And I'm grabbing it. And I, uh, I like the matte, not the glossy. I figure if I want sheen, I'm, I'm going to end up adding a mist to most of these projects anyway. And so I'll usually just use a, um, a, a, a matte that I do have glossy, but I don't tend to pick it up. And then what we're going to do, and I'm kind of smashing the back because I'm laying it down. But to, for, her bot, for her bodice of her dress, um, give me one sec. You can see that I've shaped it kind of to fit. Boy, this, I told y'all, I warned y'all this can be a little difficult to do. So sorry I'm all over the place. So what I did is I don't want the tissue paper to go up in there. So I just took a pencil and I just roughly drew where my bodice is going to be with a pencil. And that way when I start adding this, and you can see, doesn't have to, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I drew a line where I wanted, and then this one I'm going to go about right here. Um, and and then we'll curve it around here, you know, just kind of as we go. But this way I have kind of a guide to make it easier to where the placement of the tissue paper is going to be. Um, so it doesn't get up in the stuff that we just want to show the, the masking and all. And I am going to sit a bolt of ribbon under this so it'll quit messing up the back. All right. And then super simple. These are just, here's the little... These are nothing but tissue paper, and if you look, you can see there's no, they're not perfect. Tissue paper is not going to punch like paper, um, like your scrapbook paper. And so I just used a bone brush. And start and added a few. And this is just wherever you want to put them. And that way, when we add the cream, it'll show through. And you can see, can y'all see how easily tissue paper adheres and um, 
this one I got on the corner. I think I got a few of those on the corner. But like I said, they don't have to be perfect because they're just kind of a hint of, of shape and color behind. And this also, you don't need to use a lot of Mod Podge with um, tissue paper because it sticks so easily, which also cuts down on your drying time. And I went ahead and added some to the back and the sides. You can bend them. All right, let's put one more. And actually, here we go. And I'm kind of offsetting these, not putting them like anywhere in a, in a true line. Um, I think that's prettier than like lining them up and trying to go for perfection. And I, I lied, I wanna do one more. All right, so this is going to be our first layer. All right. So you can see now, nothing to it. Super simple. And now we're going to start adding the cream. And this is kind of where, this is why I drew. For the top, I like to, and I'm just tearing this because I want it to be, I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to have some bends in it and to have some interest instead of just being totally plain. So I'm just going to take this, the Mod Podge and my wolf sponge brush. And I can tell y'all, if y'all watch at Michael's, sometimes they'll do these sponge brushes like 25 for a dollar. And I usually buy, if I'm really truly admitting it, about a hundred of them. And then I have them for about two years <laughs> or a year <laughs> until the next time that it's that rarity that they do it. So if you watch for it, though, you can get it. All right. Can you see how I did this? I'm following the line, but it's not exactly at the line because I can always add a bit. And see how even the folds just pop down on this with tissue paper. And the black still will show through. This layer is going to be a tiny bit wetter than the first layer, it's at least in the places where the black is going to show through, because for whatever reason, that works best. It's just a little bit more. I think it just makes the tissue paper a bit wetter. And I'm going to try to remember back also trying to, to make sure y'all can see. All right. And that's a pretty big fold. So if it gets too big and it's not sticking well, you can go back and put a little extra or you can straighten it out. I generally don't. Um, it's fine with me if there's places that it doesn't show through as well. The other thing too that I just that I did I failed to mention um, is that you can see right here I don't even have any Mod Podge under it. Tissue paper is so thin that you don't necessarily have to have it. It's going to stick anyway. Y'all aren't going to be saying I'm neat after this after this class. You're going to see I'm going to have a big mess. Oops, let's just go this way. And you're just going to work your way around using that line kind of as your base. A little bit bigger piece. Let's make some time here. 
but just so it'll stick all the way around quick, we're just going to add a little bit, make it easier. And don't worry if you, I'm not going to cover the bottom, I'm just going to cover her body, but if it gets on, if your piece gets on the bottom, just go ahead and stick it down because it's really just not going to show underneath um, all the skirting once we get that done. Okay, we're getting there almost. I'm going to come back in and I am going to add a touch more right here to the top before I before I move on to the back. And the back is a straight line, so it's super easy. But I want to touch more. And this, I'm, if you can see, and I know y'all probably can't really see the pencil line on there. I'm sorry, I don't. Can y'all? Yeah, you kind of can. All right. Now we're going to move on to the back. And the back, of course, you can see I've got pieces stuck here, no problem. I'm going to add a little bit. And I did my line. On, on the first one I did, I think I went a little lower with the, with, the, uh, with the stenciling. But there's no real right or wrong here. This is going to work no matter what. And see, I'm fixing to get my hands dirty. But if you see too, like when you take the big piece, just go for it. You can always tear off pieces and add, and then take these folds and add more. I like projects though that there's no real perfection, so you don't have to worry about if you're doing everything, because I've, I've admitted to y'all in the past that I'm a ruler girl. Um, so this is kind of fun for me just to, just to go with it. And a touch more right here. I'm going to fill in a couple of little blank spots that I have. And see, can y'all see this? I actually kind of like it when it is a bit rougher. Than when it's really smooth. Couple of extra spots. I already thought of something I forgot too. I'm going to show y'all real quick. As soon as I get this part done. Well, I didn't forget it because it's really next, but I almost did until I looked up and saw it. And I think that covers it all. So this is our base. And there you go. So I'm going to get off the little things. Any place that it's smoothing, um, sometimes if you touch it, and I'm going to stand it up over to the side to let it dry. Um, a little bit while while I show y'all the next steps. But um, if you touch it and it gets a little goopy, just run it over it again. You're good. So here we go. All right. And then I did put this on a base, and I did it the same way. And I'm I don't think well I can cover it, but it's the same thing, same concept. It's just a little wood base that I bought. I think at Hobby Lobby for like a dollar, dollar ninety nine, something like that. Real inexpensive. And I did it the exact same way. And there's one that has a fold in it. And you're going to do the exact same thing and cover it. Um, for time's sake, I'm not going to cover the whole base tonight. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put these on it so when I glue it, I can add this later. But it is exactly the same thing. And, and if y'all want me to do it, I can. But I think that you can see. And you're just going to have it going off the sides and you're going to cover it with cream too to match. Alright, now let's get rid of some stuff. 
Okay, next step is we're going to, um, while that's drying a little bit, we're going to build the skirt. And I've pre-done some of this too, but I love tool for, um, for one, it's an inexpensive thing to use when you want to use a lot of something. And what I have is, is I have, I bought, I buy these 100, 100 yards and you can get them at any craft store. Um, I watch for the sales and I have a few colors that I buy the big ones. Sometimes I'll buy the small if it's not a color I'm going to use, but like black and cream and white, I use a lot. I go back to it time and time again. And these strips, actually I might need to move this for a bit so y'all can see because I'm noticing these strips aren't, so you can see, they're just strips of tool. And, um, and I've got cream and black is what the skirt is. And all we're going to do, actually I'm just going to show you all with the black because the cream is not going to show and we're going to be misting more here in a bit. Okay, so about a yard approximately. And to do the skirt, all you do is tie the bows, tie a bow. And you're just going to tie it about halfway. Also, these are cut about a yard. And the reason that they are, it, you do not need that much, is because after we make the skirt, we're going to trim it to the right length then instead of later. And so after you tie, this is, you don't have to be careful, nothing to it, just tie a bow, and then open them up like this so that you have some stuff that'll scrunch and gather. And here's a cream one. If I get closer, you can see. Same thing, just whips approximately to where it's going to end up in the middle. Um, doesn't matter if your tails are the right length because this is actually overdone as far as length goes. So, open them up. Oh good, I see that Alda has tool too. That makes it so easy just to get hers. Alright, so here you go. And I have pre-made bows. I'm going to make one more for y'all, but I've pre-made the bows because I can sit here and tie these. But let's do one more. Um, or we can get to the fun stuff, which is actually embellishing and making it. Okay. So pull it open. And there you go. All right. Now I used seven black bows and seven cream bows for this project. And, um, I'm also getting really brave tonight. We're going to go cream first. All right, let me get the black ones out of the way. Um, I am using my hot glue gun. And one of these days, I am actually going to buy a, one of the cool ones because I inevitably burn my fingers. So the way we're going to build the skirt, let me get my ribbon back. There's no telling what this ribbon is going to look like by the time I use it. Okay. <clears throat> to build the skirt, we're going to add these. And when you're using a hot glue gun to keep your fingers safe, and another beauty of this project is, is that you can pinch these. And yes, I said pinch, and I didn't even mean to. I know Delaney will tease me about that because y'all did that last week. Okay, here we go. And you're just going to add a touch. And we're going to put them right along the edge because we're making the skirt low because of all the things that are going to go on top to keep that low. And this you can do. Can y'all see that smoking? It's so hot. This you can do um, while it's still damp. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't my, one of my better moves to attach that. Okay, I'm going to stand this up and I'm going to show y'all at intervals because it's going to end up a mess if I don't. But I'm trying to avoid y'all having to listen to um, the hair dryer too much because I know that we probably will at some point have to listen to it a little bit.
and we're doing if you see I'm let me stick this one I'm leaving a space in between see I told y'all I'd burn myself I'm leaving a space um, in between these and that's because we're going to alternate them with the black and you can do that as you go and see how long these are I told you we're going to trim them um, you can do that as you go um, and just alternate them as you go but this works too I didn't think to bring any ice into my ring. <laughs> that one that I burnt. Okay, so see where we're going here? And it's starting to dry. When I'm touching it, it's it's starting to be pretty dry. Mod Podge dries pretty quickly. Okay, and um, I used six this time. I think one, two, three, four. Yeah, six this time. So we'll use a few less. Um, and that's something, too, that you're just kind of eyeballing it. Um, probably took less because I might have made my bows a, ha a hair bigger this time. And then we're going to take the black. And I am going to lay it down one more time. And we're going to put it in between each of these. And I'm not going to touch it again. Y'all are going to see me get a lot more careful. Okay. All right, I'm going to stand it up again so we can do it. I'm going to get it here. So see how we're starting to get this this look um, for the bottom of the ruffling and we're going to play with it a little bit as we go too. And you could easily do this with Fabri-Tac but it takes longer because you're having to hold it. Um, if you use Fabri-Tac and for the class because frankly I really normally would but for the class, I knew that using Fabri-Tac was going to take longer to dry, and we got a lot of ground to cover tonight. Let's see, right here it is. And these little scissors are nonstick, and I've decided that they can get glue on them. So I can push it in a little bit and not burn my fingers. And you can also see that the reality is I probably could have cut these a whole lot shorter. Um, but the beauty of tool is it is so inexpensive that it's not like when you're using like a gorgeous expensive ribbon that you're like you want to be super careful that you don't waste it. Okay, whoops, pulled it right off with those scissors. All right. Now, to get this trimmed, I'm going to go ahead and set it on here because this is where it's going to come in um, for the height. And all I'm going to do is to start, I'm just going to, and it tool. Oh, how do I explain? You can cut it anyway, but I prefer large scissors because the ends don't get as jagged. And I like it also, you can see I'm kind of pulling it away from her body. And the reason is, is because I want it to bunch up and have some volume instead of just punching it down. And you're literally just going to snip it here and there. And if you cut it too short and you don't like it, you can go under and on the under layer, you can add a little bit more. And I hit the camera. Let me get it reset. Hang on one sec. I'm going to lay this down so you can see because now I have a length. So this one's a little long. I can trim it. But the ends aren't as jagged as when you're using small ones and using more cuts. This allows you to use less cuts. 
Maybe for fun, after we finish broadcasting, I'll show y'all what I'm doing because I am dropping this stuff on the floor beside me. Whoops. All right. A couple more and we are good to move on. And I'm straightening it up, but like I said, remember, you can always go back and add, or you can always go back and trim it a little bit shorter. Okay. And there is the base of her skirt. See? And it's pretty, but it's not as pretty as it will be once we start to add stuff. And you can smoosh this up. But we're going to be adding stuff on top. So let me move this back out of the way. And good. We're, we're pretty dry here. I think by the time we get to the, the next step, we will be. Okay. This, I have racked my brain, and I'm almost positive that this is from May Arts. And what it is, is it's actually an elastic. Um, you can see it has some give. But I loved the look of it because it looked like lingerie to me, and I thought that would be so pretty popping up. And I had very little of it, and I wanted to make sure I had enough. So I'll show you all what I did. I just kind of made sure, I'm just measuring just to kind of make sure I have enough to do here around it. So, um, but I didn't want to take away, I didn't want to go down into the dress. So I wanted to cut it into two pieces, and let me get the good scissors. And this was a really easy way to do it. And I just took some sharp fabric scissors, and you can see, let me come up closer, and you can see I just cut down the bottom. And that way, to me, it kind of ended up looking like it was tucking out or popping out of the top of her bodice. And you could use lace. Um, I, I dug through my stash originally looking for some tiny black lace. I thought that would be real pretty on the, um, you know, to show the show where her dress is. I think I've used these scissors a few too many times for paper crafts because they are not cutting nearly as well as they used to. All right. Now, because this is velvet in the middle, you can see what just happened. So it's going to make a bit of a mess at first, but as we go through the process, it is, uh, it's, it's going to be fine, and you can just kind of pick off any pieces if it happens. Actually, I just did it real bad. All right. Okay, we're going to save this piece for later because we're going to use it too. And here's what we're going to do. That line we drew is going to be our guide. And I'm going to use fabric tack fabric tack because nah we'll stick with it. I can't. <laughs> I'm a little afraid of my glue gun after burning my fingers. All right. And this you just want to try to do. Well, I did this last time. We may use fabric yeah, fabric tack after all, because it's easier to do a line. All right. So I'm gonna start um here on the side. Actually, I'll start here in the corner. But start somewhere to where your end is, where you end up is not going to be like right in the center of the front. The reality is, is nobody's ever going to really notice it anyway. And I'm just following that basic line with some glue. And then we're going to take this. And remember, we want it to look like it's peeking out. So we're going to do it with the ruffle facing upwards. And remember, Fabri-Tac is fast, but it's not ridiculous. So we'll have a little time to make sure all our ends meet at the end. And here we go. And I know that I'm having trouble with 
being where y'all can see it and I can see it. So we'll keep trying to get that. So if somebody texts me if I get out too long where y'all can't see something I did. Okay, so see what we're doing here? I opened a new bottle of Fabri-Tac since our last show too because that one was getting to the point where it did not want to come out. Okay, and work our way all the way around. Now this one might, since the back's a little high, you can also uh, buy yourself a little space. I don't, I don't want it to be too high and I want it to be pretty here around the edge. So I, the ruffle's giving me a little bit of extra wiggle room here. And then here at the end, you're gonna connect it. And like I said, this is fast, but it's not instant. So I've got a little bit of time to work with it to make sure these little edges line up. And if you're looking for a neat project, this is not the one. All right, here you go. Let's snip it. Okay. And we're, here we go. A little bit of black on there is not matter, and like I said, you can mess with that a little bit later. But, and then make sure when you're doing this that you kind of V down here. I think it makes it prettier. And there we go. So see? Super easy. All right. I'm moving the trash can to the side that I seem to be moving towards today for my, my trash. Okay, so this is the base of the bodice. And now, because we're going to start doing some of the other stuff, we're going to go ahead and miss this. And y'all have to bear with me just a sec. So I'm going to run around the table and grab my stuff I knocked off. <laughs> okay, I'm back. <laughs> so I'm going to use the same two colors of mist that I used before. And this tool will bounce back. So you can gather it to hold it. It's not going to hurt it. Normally, I probably, you know, it would be standing up. But this is just going to be a few bits of mist. Use your paper towel and just kind of. But we're just. I, I just love the sheen of this gold. So, a couple of gold mist here and there, and a couple of the stone. And I'm only dabbing it mainly because I really still want that, that hint of the tissue paper to still show through. It looks like we need a little in the middle. And then this one, I'm going to have, this part I'm going to have to do standing up. Let me see if I move the camera a little higher if y'all can see what I'm doing. But what I'm going to do is I want to pull that color into this tool a little bit. And so... I'm just going to spray just around the top, nothing much, just a little here and there. And if you get some on your bodice again and it's more than you like, just dab, it, dab at it a bit. And this dark, um, it is pretty, pretty dark. Um, so if you pull away further, you're going to get a little less mist on it. So here is where we are for now. We've got a little bit of color to pull it down in there. And here's our curl. Okay. Now, the next layer um, is a little strange. When I was doing this, I kept thinking, what do I have that's silver? And, you know, I pleated paper last time, and we're going to do a little bit of pleating, but I was looking for something silver to go with the adornments. And I came up with baking cups. These are muffin cups, just from the grocery. Uh, obviously nothing fancy. You probably have them in your pantry if you're like me and, and you like to not use the muffin things every time. You can just set these on a cookie sheet. And here's what we're going to do. Let me move that out of the way. Okay, so here's what I did. I folded them in half. You can see they're silver and they go great with the beautiful adornments we're going to use. 
and I cut off the circle part because all I want is the pretty plating. And we have this and I cut it in half. And that gives us something to go on top of that tool. And here's, I did three because you're going to want to push it together to gather it up a bit. They make a weird sound when you're cutting them. All right, so now this I actually, it may be a, a blessing that we're gonna work from the top. I'm not sure, we'll see. And I'm, you can, all, I know y'all know this because most of you have been crafting and doing other crafts for a while. Um, the hot glue strings, you can just pull off later. And let's see, it looks like if I do it right here, y'all can see. And this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go so if y'all can see, but I can't, let's see. You're going to go down here, push your tool down a bit, because this is basically just going to sit on top and draw yourself, actually here, draw yourself a line of hot glue. And this is another one of those things, watch your fingers. Okay. And while it's smoking, I'll tell y'all something really, never mind. <laughs> okay, so then you're going to do, uh, we're just going to attach these like this. And we're going to gather it up a little bit as we go. And hold it in place. And let me let this set just a sec to make sure it's actually sat or set. Okay, so can y'all see that? We're just going right up against your body again, right on top of the tool. And we're going to work our way around. And where it's attached, if you get a little heavy or a little light or whatever on the hot glue, or if you want to use Fabri-Tac, it will also hold this. Um, don't, don't worry about that because we're going to put another layer on it to cover it. Yeah, this angle y'all can see and I can. Okay, one sec. Okay, I'm I'm not sure what this text means, so more information. <laughs> okay, here we go. So we're working our way around, and I'm going to go ahead and stand it up because when I get to the back side, um, if I've got it laying down, I'm going to bend this, and I don't want it really bad bent right off the bat. And there it is. I thought I lost it for a minute. I've been throwing so many things away down there. I was afraid I had thrown it away. Okay. I think I just realized what the text meant. They want you to tell them. Okay, I'm going to look at the chat here in a sec. Are y'all wanting to tell y'all what I said never mind about? Okay, so see what we've got here? We've got this. And now, once we get all the layers built, we're going to pop it back up a hair.
<laughs> All right. So here, see how we're we're building this the top layer. And the next thing I did, and let's see, we I think we have time. I'm gonna for anybody who wasn't here last week, um, I'm gonna do really really fast on paper pleating. Or not last week. Last time I did a show, I think it was uh, two weeks ago. I'm gonna show just so everybody can kind of see. Okay, I'm telling y'all. I just noticed after I've burned my and y'all, I shouldn't even admit this and and frankly, but I'm even going to show y'all. Remember that cool heat glue gun I wanted? It's adjustable, and I just figured it out. <laughs> so there, now y'all know how ridiculous I feel. Okay, for pleating. <laughs> ink first. <laughs> and then you're going to... uh. Let's see, let's get rid of some mess. But I'm afraid now if I turn it down that um, it may go off or like break it or something with my luck. And that wouldn't be a good thing to happen during this. So next time uh, I'll have it on low and maybe I won't have blisters on the end of my fingers because I'm pretty sure I do. All right, so ink and distress, really easy. I used a black ink, um, the Brilliance. And this has kind of a sheen to it, but you use so little, it really doesn't matter. It can be anything. Mist it. And remember, we're not misting it a lot. Just a little. Just enough to uh, to make it easy to work with. And then, here we go. And we're just going to pinch it together. And we're going to end up with plates. And if y'all remember from last time, if you were here, um, you want to let this dry well, and then you can go back and do it a bit more. But um, this is a one inch by 12 inch piece. And for the skirt, I actually did a one inch wide and I glued two 12 inches together. So this is just a quick little to show y'all in case you weren't here last time. I've, I've actually done this um, ahead of time. And if y'all remember when I did this, if you were here last time, I said, wouldn't this be great on a dress form? And so I, of course, had to try it. So here's the finished piece. So this, this ends up being 1 inch by 24. And we're going to add it to the top here around this. And like I said, this is another thing that it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, we're, we're just going to get it attached and we're going to go right on top with the glue gun. I'm going to try to show y'all again. Okay. And actually, I started right in the front. I don't like to do that. Let's start over here on the side and add a little bit. Okay. We're just going to tuck this right on top. And you're just pushing it in. Um, it's already really pleated and ruffled. And you can gather it up some if you want because um, you have plenty to make your way around here. So here in the front, I'm going to push it together a little bit, give us a little bit more gathering. trim this off where we've got the overlap because I have a little bit left or you can even if I knew about my glue gun and it wasn't so hot actually I might touch it and try to just use it all but I think we're going to say that is good enough and actually if you can see I've just got a tiny bit of overlay so I'm not even going to worry about it and then the last thing is is that extra piece that we have left of this ribbon is going to go on the top two and that's going to give us that final <coughs> little cover and I and I like this little velvet finishing it off 
and we are going to use Fabri-Tac for that. And another thing that you can do, and it it actually makes more sense, is if you start where our bow and our adornment's going to be, that probably makes the most sense because any edging you have is going to be covered up at that point. And because this has a little bit of leeway for dry time, I'm just going to go ahead and work my way all the way around. And then you're just going to tuck that. Let me put where you see it. We're just going to tuck this on top. So lots of layers and ruffles here. And actually, I need to go in here a little bit more. I've got a piece that popped up. So I'm going to put it in there. In here, in the back. And I'm just tucking this down as I go um, on top. And I'll show y'all at an angle once I get it all down so you can see it better. Okay. Give it trim off the extra. And this, like I said, it's elastic, but I'm not stretching it. I'm really not taking back advantage of the elasticity. So you can see here, we've got our three layers. And I know that has a bit of a glare, but it's because of that foil metallic. All right, and also one thing you may have noticed is the tool is getting a bit bunched because it's, it's not setting on the base, so it's a hair long. At the end, you can see, you'll just be able to, to pop it all back out. Okay, now one thing I am going to do is, after I do this, I'm going to pop, I want it to be kind of up, and so I'm going to just, all I'm doing is just moving it, I had it down to where it's easy to work with, and now I'm going to push it back, push it up to where it all just kind of gathers around her, so you can kind of see that, and then this tool will end up coming up it, and then just in a few places, go tuck it back down, so see what I'm getting here? And this is what, to me, is so fun about working with this foil. And it was, like I said, it was just kind of an improvised thing that I ended up loving and might even revisit one of these days. Um, so, see, we're getting just some interest as far as it's not all straight across. And now you can see the ruffle of the tool. There we go. Okay, now we are... Um, couple more little things. Let's go ahead and add the, the tool bow. Or no, that's not true. Okay, here's what we're going to do now. We're going to do feathers. And let's see, i got seven minutes. I'm going to apologize in advance because I don't think we're going to make it all the way through this. I may go a little over, y'all. I'm sorry. For the feathers, actually, we can take the, let's see how wet it is. No. For the feathers, what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of Mod Podge and that's probably not, yeah, that's plenty because I'm not doing them all. And then what I like to do for the feathers is I like to add a tiny bit of water. Um, and I did these for the mask I did um, this month, for this month's kit. And I kind of experimented during that time, so this time, and this is just a brush that, whatever, just to mix it up, and I got a little bit runny, but it really might be a little bit thicker than that. Um, so I already kind of knew what worked for me whenever I came, whoops, one extreme to the other. When I came to this project, um, I already kind of knew what was going to work for me. And these feathers were also included in the kit this month. And if they're too long, you're going to snip them. And the ones I have are too long. So just snip them and get them short. And you can do this a couple of ways. You can take your fingers or you can take, uh, or you can just dip them. If you dip them, you want to keep it pretty light. But the feathers you can see, and let me, I wish I could, I'm going to show you here. So I'm going to pull up closer. You just want to get the tips. And then kind of wipe them off so there's not a bunch. I've got stuff stuck all over me. 
So see here where there's not a whole lot on there and you can wipe it till you're happy with it. And then what I used, this is the uh, glass glitter and I know Alda has it in the store and it's, it's a Prima product. And this is like a chunky glitter and I absolutely love it. It's not a fine grain and you're just gonna do it on here. And then you do it here. So see here? And that is all I did with the feathers. I just tipped them. And I'll show you one more. If you can find them short, that'd be great. But I know that in a package, they're usually going to be a whole bunch of different sizes. So we're going to dip it. And this one I'm going to do a little bit more. And you can even, let me show you. You could even do a tiny bit on the sides. And then when you put the glitter on it, you'll just have tips. So this is totally up to you. It won't quit shaking. Personal choice. So that is it. And because that was such a simple step, I saw no reason to do a whole bunch of them. So I went ahead and did them in advance. And I'm putting my lid back on my glitter because I do not want to spill it. I've already done that with my beads during this project. Okay, so here's the ones that I did a bunch of. Not to excuse my lovely paper plates, too. Okay, let's get rid of some stuff. We have to vacuum. Okay, um, this I used hot glue. And it's, it's pretty much, let me show you on the real one. It's pretty much a random thing, but I did make sure to build around where I'm putting the bow and the adornment. So you can see I did do some up there. But these, all I did was, is I randomly, and this is dry enough, I'm going to lay it down so y'all can see. This, I put a, I put, um, I'll save a, a tiny one for the top part. Okay, let's save those. All right. This, I put a little bit of hot glue on the end, and I tucked them in, and it doesn't matter where, and they're going to stick, you can see, and once they're dry, if you end up with a place with hot glue, all you got to do is just bunch up that tool a little bit, and it'll cover it up. So, I'm going to add a few of these. We're really not going to go far over, y'all. I'm sorry. I thought I could make it if I prepared ahead, but still a little bit long. And I'm going to go ahead and stand this up because otherwise I'm going to smash it all again. And let me show y'all. Let me show you here. Actually, I'm going to hold it here like this. Okay. This I'm going to, this is not, I would normally just put it on the tips, but I'm going to put a couple of little dots of hot glue here where we're going to build, um, the little accented place on her skirt and you know maybe put one one high and and you can you can go all out on this or you can do a little you know just a little bit but we're just gonna add a couple right here on the top so see not nothing major just a couple and uh, and then I'm going to add a few more to Oh, and then we want to add, um, I think I've used a couple up here. So let's add another. All right. And remember, I'm doing these a little bit. I'm going to layer down one last time. Uh, I'm doing these um, a little bit different than the last time just because they're feathers. They're not going to be, I don't want them to have to hold. They're not ever going to be just perfect. They're all going to be a hair different, which is, I think, what's probably the best part about mixed media is it's never exactly, and even if, you know, you're inspired by somebody, along the way you come up with your own ideas. Okay, so let me add a few more to her skirt. And also another thing y'all may have noticed along the way is that for this project, I mixed gold and silver. 
um, a lot. For one, this chunky glitter, it's definitely silver, but it's got so much dimension to it that I think it's like really awesome. Um, but I like the idea of mixing gold and silver occasionally. And for this type of project, I think it's perfect because I think that gold added a warmth to her, her dress. Okay, let me add about two more. I didn't know how many I needed because it ends up kind of being what I'm in the mood for as I go. Okay, so here we go. So that is the feathers. Um, really easy. And actually, I think I want one more up here where we're going to build. Um, really easy and a whole lot of bling in real life. I don't know if it how, how well it really comes across in a photo, but th this glitter is like truly gorgeous in real life. If you haven't gotten your hands on some, you probably want to at least buy one to give it a go and see what you think. All right, now that ribbon thing I've been using, let's see what I got here. I may smush the back, but we'll pop it back up. To, actually, let's do it this way first. The, the ribbons, this one, I know I've shown y'all in the past classes how to do ribbon. This one, there's it's really just a shoestring bow. And you're going to give it a twist in the back, and we're going to tie two of these. So see, we're just going to tie two, and you give it a twist in the back so that the velvet is on top for both of them. And you can see, even, mine, even though I do this all the time, it's still kind of popped around, but um, it's not a problem. And we're going to, instead of like trying to tie some fancy bow, I just tied two of these and stacked them on top of each other and called it good because we're going to put something in the center, so the center of this bow doesn't really make any difference. But one did not look like it had enough oomph to me. So here we go. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Okay. And where this is going to go is right here on top of these feathers. Boy, this is hard to see. And you're going to use your hot glue gun or your fiber tackle work on this too. And we're going to put one down. And hold it and let it set a little bit. Can y'all see that? There we go. Ooh, that kind of shows the glitter well. And then we're going to put the other one right on top. So just glue on the knot, uh, right on top of the knot. And what this one is, you do want to do, is you want to set it at an angle so that they're not totally lined up. See there? Really easy and pretty. And then you can trim these however you'd like. Um, I'm going to trim them to where they're not totally, but I like to do them at an angle. And uh, I think I mentioned that this is velvet, and if you remember, it, it went, it goes really nicely with that trim I ended up settling on because it has a velvet edging. Okay, and then if you don't have these, these are probably my favorite adornment in the store. I think they are stunning. And let me tell you, I love all the adornments, so that's saying something. So see here. There we go. And this, we're going to hot glue it on, too. We really, truly are real close to being done. I want to show you all one last little thing before, after I finish the adornments. And uh, this is one of the extra bows. And for the top part right here, I think my camera has been moving on me because I am noticing we're getting lower and lower. I probably hit it at some point and didn't notice. Let's see. Come this way. Okay. Uh, I want to put some of the, the tool here, and I'm going to shorten it down. And actually, let's just, let's just do this different. This is probably easier if you just take it and get you a loop and tighten a knot. 
So see, just a little knot here. And we just want a little hint. So, but we want it to kind of echo the, the, the beauty of the skirt. Now that camera does not want to sit there so you can see it. Okay. So, and we're going to trim it short. Let me put ring set. So there you go. And you might want to fan this out a little bit. And we're going to attach it. I am sorry, y'all, that I'm over a bit. One more technique after this, and then we are done. All right, so see how we're going here? And then we're going to take an adornment, and we're going to glue it on top of that. So here we go. And like I said, I'll post the, the close-ups on my blog so that everyone can, like if you want to refer, if you actually do decide that this is something you want to go make, you can refer back to it, and I'll post a lot of close-ups so you can see the details. All right, so that is her entire body. And the last detail I did add, and I definitely want to show you all this, and I have two schools of thoughts on this. I used the, uh, for mine, I used the Golden Artist Color, or what is this, uh, Regular Gel Semi-Gloss, and this is, um, just the gel and you'll see that it has it has some texture it's thick I don't know how well y'all can actually see that but you can see that it's not a paint it's it's thick if you haven't used it I would assume that most of you have probably used it on something but if not um, this is great stuff and I used it on mine and I do love it but I do think that it might be um, another option that might hold a little bit longer because on paper this stuff is great. But on the, on the tool, I did notice I'm losing a few beads. So this would be personal choice, whatever you wanted to do. But I think if you used a little bit of Fabri-Tac, that would be great too. And you can see I've got a glass thing because I want to try to catch my beads. And I'm just going to I'm not going to do the whole thing on this one. I'm just going to show you. And all you're going to do, let's see if I can get it where you can see it well. You're going to take this and put your hand, like I said, this is messy, and put your hand behind it and just touch it. But you want, let's see if I can show you, you want enough for it to grab hold of. And this, this dries clear, so you're not going to see it. You might see a hint of it, but nothing major. And then I used the, uh, these are also the Prima, these, and I know these are in the store, and these are zinc, and they're the glass beads. And these are real little, but they're actually a hair bigger than I expected on the bee, which makes them really stand out. And you're just going to sprinkle them. And you can see I still have some little blobs from when I did it before because I'm I'm saving these things. They're pretty. I don't want them all on the floor, even though I did drop a few. And then this will dry clear. And of course, we're not going to have time to let it dry. Let's see if I can get it to focus. I notice it's not really focusing. Can you all see that? All right. And so what you're going to do is just put it at random places around. Here's another thing too, if you don't want to use that, if, if you don't like that scoop, you this has enough that you can even take one of the sponge brushes and you can do that. But what I found was, is, and I'm going to do it without showing you, that if you put your finger behind it, it seemed you could push it in just a tiny bit to make sure that they all stuck. And I'm, I like to have something under me just to catch the bulk of them. Yeah, that one shows a little bit better, I think. So that is all. And you just go around in random spots. I'm going to show you the finished one so you can see. So you're just going to go around it in random spots on the skirt. And then to finish this off, all you have left is gluing it to the base. And so here is just to remind you of exactly what we did, the total finished version with the beads on it. Okay, let me pan up. All right, well, I hope y'all enjoyed tonight. It's not wanting to sit. Um, I had fun with this project. Like I said, I could play with these all day long, every day, and uh, to me, they're just fun. They're a way to be creative. 
Um, I, I don't know if Alda has any more in the store, but if she does, I would suggest getting your hands on one. If you haven't done the one from your kit, give that a shot. Um, and love to see what y'all come up with, so please share with me. Thanks for bearing with me through the uh, through the overrun. And don't forget that Jax will be here next month or next week. And don't forget that next month we're having Flying Unicorn Gives Back, and we're doing cancer. I think it's Cancer Search for a Cure for Children. And I know we're sharing that on our Facebook. Thanks so much for coming. I so appreciate y'all being here. Good night.